All right, so we're going to do a brief tour of the Garmin 3000. At the end of this video, you're going to understand uh, the system much better and how it differs from, let's say, the 1000. There's a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences as well. So in the Vision Jet, we're going to turn on the Bat 1, and that will power up all the displays. The two big displays are PFD, MFD, primary, multifunction, and these are GTCs, Garmin controllers. This is one, two, and three, and they all have different functions. This is the environmental control system. This is the standard uh, system that comes in. The PFD you'll use for all of your main flight activities, your bearing pointers, all of your um, heads up display, out, your speed tape, your altitude, that is all on here. Then there's a checklist, so this screen, this screen splits into two. And our checklists are across the entire system. We have all these different categories. If you get a yellow cast or uh, a white one, which is informational, you can go in and figure out what that all is. But normal is for all the modes of flight. And in this case, we are before engine start. This checklist is governed by this checklist button. And we'll get into more of this in a second. You can see over here we have uh, our flight display and then you have your, actually your, um, your flight director as well, as you can see. You can turn that on and off from your, your Garmin controller, your autopilot area. Okay, this is your gear indication. Obviously we're on the ground. Here you have your engine information system, EIS here, and you can see all the various systems. This is a double screen and you have basically full control over what happens on this screen and you can switch between screens and systems using this button right here. Okay, so GTC1 is primarily focused on the work that happens in your flight screen. So if we want to change our, our source from GPS to localizer, that would happen here or our second localizer those kinds of things. The main thing that I activate or use sometimes is minimums. So sometimes I'll load an approach and just to, to see it, get familiar with it, and then I need to put in minimums. You can do that from over here. So that is GTC1. I'm gonna get rid of this here. Okay, GTC2 automatically defaults to the initialization process which is after we've started the engine, a bunch of aircraft systems that we need to check. That would include databases, safety information, system tests. Um, we're gonna initialize our fuel and sync the system to the amount of fuel that we have. Weight and balance, and it will bring up the entire envelope here. You wanna see that. And then we can set aircraft loading, empty weights, all that stuff here. That is a requirement before you fly a vision jet. And then, of course, the flight plan, so at least our origin and destination, and then takeoff data, which is which one way we're, runway we're using and how long the runway is. We put how much of that runway we need. That is also uh, a requirement before flying. You're not allowed to take off uh, per the POH without having these things initialized. Okay, this system, as you might imagine, or this screen rather, is the one that you're gonna interact with probably the most. This has your weather system. So if we are gonna turn on our weather radar, onboard weather radar, and then compare that to the ground-based radar, which is NEXRAD, you can do that here. And that's super important where you're in the flight levels and you wanna have a view of the upcoming weather in real time, but also maybe what's beyond that using NEXRAD, that's super helpful stuff. And we can make that bigger from here, or we can go back to the main screen or main configuration. So that's weather. Other things that are on here include all kinds of matters of flight planning. So if we're gonna add a destination, let's call it, I don't know, Punta Gorda, K, P, G, D, and enter. And that's gonna show up there, it's gonna show up here. So all, all activities within flight planning are here. Um, procedures, so we really have three types of procedures. A SID or a departure, an arrival or a star, and of course an approach. And lots of times in the Vision Jet, you'll have an arrival 
that connects ideally to a point on an approach. And so those are the things that we will connect together. In the Vision Jet, pretty much all, you know, maybe 80, 90% of the, of the arrivals from en route into a terminal area is through a star, a standard arrival. And these things are, are pretty important to understand. Uh, you can't really fly the Vision Jet well without knowing how to do these things. And they come with two kinds of restrictions. They come with an altitude restriction sometimes, and they come with a speed restriction, which will be highlighted at the different points on the plate. And so that needs to be transferred into the system so the plane is flying it either on autopilot or if you're manually flying the plane, you need to have that in here uh, before you get onto uh, a standard arrival or a standard departure. Otherwise your workload is just enormous. And so that's the stuff that happens in flight planning and in your procedures, okay? Uh, we have all of our charts. So if I move this blue cursor over to this area, I can go to charts and I can put anything I need up here. I can put my uh, airport, I, if I'm on an arrival, I can put that on here. And one of the things that is really helpful is the plane is gonna be superimposed on your arrival or your departure and you can see it on here. So situational awareness is um, greatly enhanced by having the ability to put your charts right over here. So I can have a chart with my plane superimposed on where I'm going. And here you can see there is an altitude restriction at tiny. Um, and that will show up on the system over here. If I scroll over here, make that big, and then scroll out. If I did load this up over here, it would show up over here. So as I'm flying, I have two pieces of information that help me understand if I'm complying with my air traffic control instructions. That's really helpful. If at any point you need to get back to the checklist, all you do is you hit the checklist button, push down, and you're back on. That's pretty clever. Now, we do have aircraft systems. There are a large number of systems in the plane, as you can see here from ice, landing gear, electrical. Now, all of that can be put right in front of you. So you can tell what's working in the plane, which batteries you're using, if you're icing, you know, a large portion of the flights in a vision jet will be in ice for some portion. And so your icing system will work. Well, how much IPS fluid do I have left? for the windshield, that kind of thing is here. Are the boots running? That'll show up over here as well. So that's super helpful stuff. Okay, other things that are on here, and this is just a quick overview of GTC2, is services. Now this is super helpful stuff because we have music in the plane. So XM radio, if you have long flights at the flight levels, this is really nice to have. And other things from there. And in the utilities, we have our initialization system um, and other things that are nice to have at our fingertips. If we ever need to know what the nearest airport is, you get all of your lists right there in front of you. So GTC is a super helpful and for lack of a better term, super robust um, controller. All right, so what's the last one? If this one on the left, GTC one in standard operation, supports your flight heading and your HUD, uh, and GTC2 controls your flight planning and everything associated with that in the aircraft systems, what is GTC3? Well, as you got, imagine it, this is for your communications. And here is where the biggest difference happens in my view from going from a 1000 or 1000 NXI plane, which was an SR-22 perspective, into the Garmin 3000, which is your frequencies. And this can get hairy pretty quickly. So you have your COM1 and your COM2, just like the other plane. And you have your primary and your backup. So if I wanted to activate the backup from the primary, all I do is hit the primary and it'll switch frequencies. If I wanna go from my frequencies in COM1 to COM2, all I have to do is, is hit the mics and that does the same thing over here. Whoop, 
and if I want to change these frequencies, whoop, I can do that. So that's how you switch between COM1 and COM2. That sounds pretty simple, <laughs> um, yet where it gets kind of challenging is if there's a lot of communications, a lot of frequency changes, and you need to be picking up your ATIS and, and doing all that at the same time. That sounds like an unusual situation, but it happens every flight, every flight, particularly when you're in Florida, you're very busy airspace, or if you're flying in New York. So proficiency as it relates to GTC3, I think is the biggest learning curve relative to the 3000s uh, electronics suite, where you might be on ground frequency or tower frequency, and you need to switch over, uh, for example, to departure, but you want to still be monitoring the tower, for example, if it's a CTAF, that kind of thing, where you want to still be listening to the traffic at the airport. So getting proficient in this area is super important because there isn't a lot of time to be plugging away um, at frequencies. A, a trick here that I think vision jet pilots that have been doing this for a little while understand is the one in all the frequencies is already programmed in. So let's just say that I'm on frequency 119 and I get a change to frequency 123.72. So there's two ways to do this. I could plug in one two, three, seven, two, and then hit transfer, and that's going to make it primary. Or I can do two, three, seven, two, transfer. Whoop, let's see, two, three, seven, two, transfer. Same thing. So I get rid of that, that leading one. So that, you know, one second or two second little additional piece of work doesn't sound like a lot, but it is if you have five things that you need to be doing. Oh, and by the way, you're still flying the plane. Uh, leaving off, leaving off that that initial one is helpful. So that's a little trick in working with um, the frequencies. The last thing I'll lead you with leave you with is the ability to focus. So sometimes when you're in the plane. You have passengers, people are talking with you. And even though you say, hey, you know, I need sterile, sterile cockpit at, you know, all the way through my departure or in my arrival, and things will still come up in the cabin and distract you. So there's a couple of ways that you can eliminate that noise immediately. The first thing is you can go to intercom. And if you hit these, these three greens, nobody can can talk to you and you can't hear them. That's super helpful to completely isolate the pilot. And again, that's intercom and just take everybody off. If all hell breaks loose in the cockpit and you still need quiet and you don't want to go through punching a bunch of buttons, on the other side, and this is not a, a Garmin 3000 thing, of your flight stick, there is a button. and that one will isolate everything from the plane. So it's a little weird. You kind of have to hold it with one hand and then reach over to the push to talk with the other hand. But there is a button that isolates the entire aircraft from you in a quick pinch. I don't use it a whole lot, but that does come in handy if let's just say you have music and it's low, but it's still running and ATC gets on and says, I have a reroute for you and you just want to get on real quick and get those new waypoints. I can hit this and say, go ahead, write it down. That can happen. That can happen pretty quickly. So that in a summary is the five screens in the Garmin 3000 VisionJet.